Good talk, too. Uh, you know, and that's what I love about getting them on is it, it's like that's another part of it is talking about what you're cooking and being able to present it in a way, right, and share what it's about. If you're, if you, I mean, I mean, and these, like we've said, these are culinary craftsmen and craftswomen. I mean, they're artisans, right? Like putting it together is, you know, is, is such a joy for them. All right, let's keep it going in the KUA of News Zoom Room where uh, we have got the big gun of the Republican Party here to just kind of sort everything out that's been happening. It's been a pretty eventful week. Uh, Juan Carlos uh, Benitez, <laughs> the Republican Party chair. Thank you for joining us this morning, Juan. Hey, so it, it's, all, it's always my pleasure. Sorry, uh, just uh, experiencing some technical difficulty these uh lately uh so uh trying to make sure that we correct those and we're able to move forward right on well looking good uh beautiful scenery back there one thank you so uh anyway how you been we're doing we're doing good we uh i'm you know came back from uh from the from the mainland United States, working in Washington D.C. and and uh, uh, with our our Republican leadership and uh, making sure that they know about Guam and and take care of us and address uh, some of the short uh, uh, issues that have been coming out lately with the uh, Biden administration trying to uh, take benefits away from us. So we were we we fought for those benefits under the Trump administration. We're going to continue to fight for those benefits to be continued under, during the Biden administration. Uh, let's just start at the beginning, I guess. Uh, first of all, this ethics complaint uh, that came out, well, it was kind of an unofficial um, one, and there was just a whole bunch of stuff that happened after that where we had Senator Tello on, and she said, oh, this is an attack from within my own party. Uh, then there was a release that came out from you guys that was promptly rescinded that basically said, no, Tello, it's not your own party, it's the evil Democrats. And then that release was rescinded, and you guys put out another one. Was this uh, yesterday, Juan? And let me just go ahead and read uh, through this latest release from uh, the Republican Party. This is a legit one, right, though? You're not going to take this one back? Uh, this is the one and only release from the Republican Party. Of <laughs> go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Leadership should focus on what truly matters. The executive committee members of the GOP, Guam, are unified in their support of Senator Tello Tidego. We, we all know her to be a person of integrity who puts the island first and who's tireless, tirelessly working for the good of the people of Guam. In the process, everyone should avoid any rush to judgment and should let the process work. Everyone, including Senator Tidego, should be afforded a fair and unbiased investigation and the presumption of innocence. The party is confident that at the conclusion of any investigation, Senator Tidego will be fully exonerated of these allegations. In the meantime, Senator Tidegui and the Republican Party will continue to serve the people of Guam, will continue to push legislation and policies that promote the welfare of the island and that unite us all, legislation such as the RISE Act and reducing the BPT. We invite our Democratic colleagues to work with us in these positive endeavors and to join us in promoting a policy of inclusion rather than division. Well, that's way different than the release that was eventually unreleased, Juan. And that release was well, like well, I, the Democrats, the FBI, <laughs> corruption, there's indictments, they want to kill us because we're trying to, you know, find stuff out. And it's, damn, these Democrats, it's a conspiracy. I mean, it was like one step short of QAnon. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I'll I, go by parts. And and as there's no member in QAnon in, our, in any of our Republican associations here. And, uh, and, and I still after being an active member of the Republican Party for all this year, yet to meet one. <laughs> so it, 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 it's for me, it's interesting. It, I, I thought it was like a, some food diet or something when they, they mentioned the name for it's the first time. It's a new keto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, but, but uh, you know, mistakes happen. We receive a lot of, of proposals of what people feel that the party should say or do uh, through many times. Our processes, we review those. And then uh, we come up with a decision that we present to the executive committee. The executive committee then decides whether we want to amend, edit, or change those documents and move forward. Um, the document that you presented was not drafted by anybody from the executive committee. Uh, and that document was not reviewed by anybody of the executive committee. It was a document that fo was forward to the party. And unfortunately uh, was put in a file to forward for discussion and instead it was automatically sent out it was 
quickly rescinded prior to media. We would have hoped media would have uh, understood that to mean something happened here and, uh, and contacted us because it would have been clearly stated, look, this is not the position of the party. It was a wrong document by mistake. It was sent out. Uh, we rescinded it before even the morning uh, had arrived. It was like in the middle of the night uh, when, when this uh, uh, automatic outing uh, went out. So we, uh, I, I'm a little sad and disappointed that they would not have contacted us to find out why there was a rescinding of, of, of that position. That was never the position that we were, the direction we were going. Uh, the position where we were going, are going and continue to go is the position that we express on our one and only press release. Uh, that's the reality of that situation. Um, the, the, uh, Main, there, there are two issues that I want to make sure that are very clear. No member of the executive committee of the Republican Party uh, has said anything. Now, let me put it this way better. Every single member of the executive committee stands by our press release. It was unanimously decided. This is where we stand. We stand with our senators. They're, they're ethical and proper individuals. That's why we had them run for office. Everybody knows uh, uh, Senator Teletitagui and who she is. Uh, what we want to do is call for a full investigation to be done on this because we know she will be clear. And we and we want to end this uh, this techniques of slander and, and mud attack. You know, media keeps giving credibility to all these unfunded allegations. Uh, but they don't give the same type of airtime or attention when those investigations are concluded and our individuals are clear. You know, it is hard for individuals to live with the stain of the certain uh, of allegations that are unfounded if they're if they're not uh, provided the full uh, justice at the full time. You know, our constitution and our system of law allows for a due process. Yeah. Senators should yeah. be given a due process. We are confident that she will that she will come out with flying colors out of that, and then we hope that the media will provide a similar amount of attention and time to making sure that everybody knows that those those rumors have been quashed. Well, right, one. but that, that also that's, that's also up to the legislature because oftentimes they don't tell you anything. Yeah. If they're, you know, about their Amen. about their hearings, about when there are findings. The last time I think that there was a press conference that was held was when uh, there was an investigation, I believe, into Matt Rector. When he was a senator yeah. and everybody knew, OK, this was the conclusion, you know, and he, he ended up resigning. But yeah. complaints that have come forward in the past and even in the last legislature, yeah. we've asked questions um, and it's like, oh, we can't say anything. Yeah. And, and Juan, so, um, I mean, well, look, at look, there's well, a, a well, very, we, a very we, one. There's we, a very recent we, example uh, with Ray Taposnia, who had also mm. made an ethics complaint against against Senator Tidegui and was the most matopping thing ever. He said. She had asked a board member, hey, you know that the director sued the board. Are you okay with that? Which is, I felt, I mean, yeah, was it snarky? Sure. But was it an ethical breach? No, hell no. But they had responded to Ray Taposnia last year. And they sent him a, a, a letter saying, yeah, we looked into it. It's nonsense. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. But the, he, it never came out. The ethics committee never released it. And I also have to say yeah. that we gave Senator Tello, I mean, 45 minutes on this show to go down the list of this yeah. complaint. And then also, what do you make? You're calling for a full investigation. You want this thing to, you know, run through this committee. But uh, when we talk to the speaker, it seems like they haven't even got an official complaint that meets all of the parameters for an official complaint, meaning like a real live right. person writing on the submission form. So I don't even know if this is even going to pass muster. Well, uh, and, and if that is the case, that's exactly the process that should be. Say if somebody has to present a complaint and is doing this, it needs to be a legitimate human being who comes up and presents his allegations and charges. This is not, you know, this fake names, this idea of, of people coming here and presenting rumors uh, without providing standing behind him, we need to stop it. And, and I actually think that that the media should should also come in and say, look, at the end of the day, we talked about these allegations that were brought up. It turns out that that person doesn't even exist, that no, no real person came up and stood up. 
And we need to give the benefit of the doubt to Senator Tyler, Tyler Wee. You know, in, in this democracy that we live, you're innocent until proven guilty and there's a process and there's a reason why those requirements are there. It needs to be a real person that comes in, you, you know, it's uh, cause she's not the first politician that they've done this to. You know, we keep having all this, all these charges brought up against other people in both parties. And then they, they end up in nothing. If we were in the majority, I can tell you that that process, if someone came up, would be a transparent process. We would want to make sure that everybody saw what was going on in the workings of our legislature. And I hope to work very closely with our senators to capture that additional seat that we need so that you'll see it for yourselves when we take over in 2022. Juan Carlos, what about the comments that Senator Tello had on this show that she believed that this ethics complaint was orchestrated by um, the new National Committee woman, uh, Shelley Gibson? Yeah, they're, 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 that, those, those are rumors that were floated out there, and I can completely tell you that they're as unfounded as the allegations against Senator Tyler. Have you guys you know, tightened up your process for issuing press releases? Absolutely. And and it's, it wasn't a problem with the regular process. It was just, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, it went to the wrong, instead of, it, it went to the wrong mailbox. It was, it was some, somebody forward this, this point. They wanted us to review, to, to look at it. And instead of going for for the for the executive committee to look at it, and I know what we would have said once we saw it, uh, it, it it was sent to the media by mistake. It, it was not a, a purposes, and I can tell you, no one in the executive committee reviewed that press release before it went out. Yeah, but it wasn't that different from other press releases that you guys put out last year, where you call out the administration for hiring and you know political. So I actually thought the first release. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it was better, but it seemed more in line with what you, the type of stuff you guys have been coming out with, which is like partisan, you know, highly charged, critical, which, I mean, it, of course, you guys are the opposition party. That's what it's supposed to be. But then you come out with this, this fluffy one, and it just makes me wonder, like, what's the posture here? Yeah, first of all, it's not a fluffy one. <laughs> this, is a, this, is, this is a legal one, and it's an ethical one. And it's, it's where, where we should always be. You know, we 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 ask these people to run under our banner. We don't ask people that we don't think have the value and at the core are good, good and honest people. We ask people that we know that are worthy of carrying the banner of the Republican Party of Guam and have the best in in their in their innermost soul. They want they want the best interest for the people of Guam. And they're going to come under attack, unfortunately, under the reality we're living now. You know, Trump's attacks come towards everybody that runs for office. And what we're doing is we're frightening people from wanting to run. They're saying, why do I want to run with this? They're going to start talking badly about my family. They're going to be talking badly ab about me. Uh, for, for, for why would I do that? I would make more money in the private sector than going into the legislature. And, and my life would be fine. So we need to stop this. I think we can work together. I think you both are doing an amazing job. Uh, but the idea here is to make sure that when when unfounded allegations by fake individuals are brought up, we we the media end up clarifying. Those were unfounded allegations made by by fake names and not real human beings, and they should be disregarded. They should be dismissed. You know, we we should look at real issues because we have some of those. When those come in, then we should investigate those. But always, rule of law. You know, we're in a democracy. That's why people want to be here. Is everybody will give it, be given a fair chance, and everybody is innocent until proven guilty. And uh, and and we need to stop finding them guilty by by media uh, release. That that's not the way to do it. Who uh, up You the... asked me what a change of tone. You asked me what a change in tone in the release. I am now the chairman of the party, and. I, I've been educated as an attorney, and and I believe, you know, no more low blows. We're going to have difference on issues. They're going to be in, in, in difference on substantive issues. You know, we disagree on doing telemedicine for abortions. That is extremely dangerous. You know, we, dis, we disagree with keeping the 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 
GRT at 5%, we think we should, we should lower the VPT at 5%, we think we should be lowered at 4%. We fought hard to make sure that we, we got the uh, earned income tax credit permanently paid by the federal government. So now, you know, these are substantive issues. We're not going to be looking at going with this mudslinging. That's not us. That, at least not, um, not while I'm there and this present executive committee. So then who wrote up that initial rescinded press release if it wasn't anybody within I, the executive committee? It was again, somebody it was, within the party? Was, again, it was it was submitted to the party as, hey, you should look at you should look at this as a potential press release for us. And uh, and 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 I, that's what I want to talk to. I, I, I want to talk about the release we did right and they would we they would submit. Yeah. Uh, but I mean if you guys but, send out uh, a release that you did wrong, I mean you know, it's out there already, one. Yeah, but but you know, I would have hope I would have hoped that media would have respected the fact that it was rescinded immediately. Right. Are you trying to blame the media? I'm, I'm trying to blame the media for not following what I would have expected is a normal process of media, which would have been to pull back and say, "Why are you rescinding?" Yeah, the Juan, but but I mean, we get an, uh, a complaint that's sent to senators and. Um, once it's sent to senators, of course, they're going to put eyes on it. And of course, we have a responsibility to report on it, which we did. And we also afforded the opportunity to center tidy. We, so I'm not sure where you're going with this. Yeah. Well, and in the, and in the our, event our that, and in the event that the chain of events leads to like, Hey, it doesn't, they haven't submitted anything officially. That doesn't necessarily mean the person is a fake individual. It just means that they didn't submit anything officially. And so what we do as a media is we look at the content of it and the fact that it's been sent around to senators and we address it accordingly in a fair and balanced, you know, to quote a phrase manner. <laughs> right. Well, I, 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 I'm not blaming the media for doing what the media does. I'm just saying the Republican Party of, of Guam starts united, all of us, behind the, behind, uh, the due process of law in, in our in our democracy and and behind the transparency of that process to show that our senator has done nothing wrong and she will be clear on this and a part of that transparency is letting people know that the charges that were presented are are not from an actual name that they're basically anonymous charges uh, that should be known and the media should state that clearly when they talk about the issue. Was it Bobby Shringy who wrote the the first release? Bobby Shringy is a member of the executive committee. And I told you already that oh. none of the members of the executive committee okay. was involved right in the drafting of that press release. Who, who typically writes the press releases then for the Republican Party? Is it usually uh, a member it's, of it's the executive committee? Yeah, it's a collaborative effort of the members of the executive committee. Yes. I'm there we have three different people. It depends on the issue. Sometimes it's something I'm passionate about. I'll I'll draft this one. Uh, it's sometimes it's something that some of the other members of the executive committee that they want to have the first draft. But at the end of the day, we all review it. We all do our edits, and and then we agree on on what's going to come out through the executive committee. That release that you guys keep trying to put on us never went through that process. That was a, an email that arrived. It was put on a file so that it was forward to us so that we would see what other people were saying that we should do. Mm. And unfortunately, that file was not forward to the executive committee okay. by mistake. It went to the media. It was immediately rescinded. It was actually uh, three hours later. One, one. Yeah, but I maybe, mean, but one, you can't really fault maybe, us. Maybe next time when, when, we, when we rescind them <laughs> next time, we'll put a, we'll have put a note saying, hey, sorry. This document doesn't belong to us. You yeah. know, it, 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 we're, we're taking it back for this reason. Yeah. Uh, but also feel free. If, we, if we're awake sending it, feel free to call us back and say, why are you, why are you resending this document? And, uh, and, and we, we will be more than frank and honest and say the reasons why. And, and, and you can weigh that whether then you want to say, look, they, they submitted it, they rescinded it, and it is. I will always remember in, in Puerto Rico, uh, the senator for, for uh, Mississippi, uh, went to Puerto Rico and he was asked if he supported statehood for Puerto Rico. And he said, I support the people of Puerto Rico self, uh, having their own, deciding their own future and doing their own self-determination. And then the reporter said, of the record, and he said, of the record, I support statehood for Puerto Rico. What was the headline? Quote, of the record, 
I support statehood for Puerto Rico, end quote. You know, the guy said, you, you, why would you burn me? You know, yeah. I think let's have a communication channel. Yeah. Feel free. If, if we made a mistake, we're human. It was our fault. Okay. It was our mistake. So we we're gonna ins- out, we're gonna uh, institute a triple check system every time we get a press release from the Republican <laughs> Party of Guam. Okay, is this legit? Now, are you rec- sure? Every, are you sure you're rescinding we resend, this? <laughs> every time we resend, we resend an email. Feel free to call back. Juan, we're gonna move on from this subject because I don't like seeing you tap dance like this. It's definitely out of character. But uh, um, <laughs> let's go to Frank Blas, Senator Frank Blas Jr. Wrote a letter to the congressman after your buddy, after trying to call him, finally sent him a letter, all these issues of the SBA, e- EIDL, and eligibility on Guam. Uh, congressman St. Nicholas in the press conference said, oh, uh, Frank Blas Jr. is an ignoramus. Uh, you know, he needs to wake up. We're not asleep at the wheel. Yeah, if you don't qualify, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, so to speak. Have, have you had any conversation between Congress or with the congressman relative to this or what kind of prompted that reaction? Uh, I don't know what, what prompted that, that reaction. I, I have expressed interest to everybody uh, uh, and concerns about the decision of the Biden administration to, to tie in the funding to a 2010 census that, has, that doesn't reflect at all anything of the, of the COVID the realities that we're living with, particularly with on, while under the Trump administration, uh, everybody in the United States, every business in the United States that was impacted was provided assistance regardless where they were, because they realized everywhere in the in the in the United States was impacted by COVID. Nowhere else worse than Guam. Uh, that bill passed in in in, in you know I think that that at this point we need to look and, and call for this Biden administration to either administratively change it, or if it's in the statute itself, that requirement that they base in the 2010 census uh, that they uh, that they amend the statute. I think that that's, those are legitimate concerns and, and arguments. You know, the the way to look at it, if you look at, at that 2010 census track, Eagle, Tamuni, you know. Most of the south of, of, of Guam, all those areas are considered to be too wealthy to qualify for the benefits. And that's a problem. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. Oh, oh. Huh? Uh, but but uh, but but uh, we we start with the senator with with the senator's concern. We hope that there's a way that we can work bipartisan to fix this issue uh, with the Biden administration. But I can tell you that in the Trump administration, every business in Guam that applied got this benefit granted to them. And, and it's a pity that now that Biden has become president, we have a democratic governor and a democratic legislature that they come up with regulations that uh, have now uh, taken out half of the island. Uh, I think you heard my wife. She's, I, I have to take my, my, my son to school. Um, so right I, I hope that answers your question. Is there anything else I can I can do uh, who's, quickly? Who, who's running for governor for you guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've said it before. There's been a number of people that have approached me. Uh, I let campaigns decide when they want to officially run. Uh, but I would tell you that there's a number of exploratory committees going out there uh, figuring out if they're if they're going to make the final decision. Okay. Well, I'm heading out. What about Congress? Uh, have, have real real morning. quick, Congress. Anybody express an interest in running for Congress? We we we've we've had people express uh, interest in Congress too. Uh, well, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Thank it's you. always, a, it's it always is, a pleasure yes, for both of you. Always. Look forward to our next time in person. Yes, right on. Right. Thank you, Juan. Amen. Yeah. All right. Bye, Juan. Got it. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Juan Carlos Benita is Republican uh, Party chair. Um, it was funny because obviously they made some waves the last couple of days on this show with the Republican Party. And we had Senator Duenas, who's the minority leader, was supposed to come on and... <laughs> I talked to him yesterday. He's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll go on. But then it turns out he's actually a member of this ethics committee that, you know, is supposed to investigate this, the complaint. Um, but, and so he's like, yeah, actually, I shouldn't come on. <laughs> and then Senator Tello, I was like, hey, come back on about that release. And she was like, oh, yeah, man, really busy tomorrow morning. <laughs> so we got Juan Carlos. Uh, man, 7.53. Again, uh, Bree uh, broke the news this morning of the passing of... Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, former Speaker Joe T. St. Augustine. Um, 